Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're answering the question, where was Lincoln's bodyguard on the night he was assassinated? Abraham Lincoln established the Secret Service on the day he was shot by John Wilkes Booth. Yup. Unfortunately, even if the organization had been instituted earlier, it wouldn't have helped. Rather, the Secret Service was tasked with cutting down on the amazing amount of counterfeit money circulated in the United States at the time, hence why, until March of 2003, they were a branch of the U.S. Department of the Treasury. It is estimated that one-third of the U.S. currency in circulation was counterfeit when Lincoln signed the piece of legislation that would establish the Secret Service. Lincoln did, technically, have a permanent assigned guard on the night of the murder, but a more inept guard they could not have found. The man was a policeman, John Parker. How did Parker get such an illustrious job as one of the four hands-picked to guard the president? It's a mystery. As a policeman, Parker frequently found himself in front of police boards for such things as being drunk on duty, sleeping on the job, frequenting brothels on the job, and a myriad of other charges that all basically came down to conduct unbecoming an officer. Despite this, Parker managed to get off each time he went before the boards. For the sleeping on the job charge, he supposedly claimed that he was performing his duties patrolling the area when he heard several ducks quacking on top of a trolley car. Naturally, he climbed on top to see what was going on and promptly fell asleep. As for frequently visiting brothels while on duty, he supposedly defended himself by claiming that he was not actually there as a customer, but rather to visit certain of the ladies privately as they had called for a police officer, so it was naturally his job to go hear what they had to say, and of course they wanted to talk to him privately. Through all this, not only did he manage to keep his job, but when the death threats against President Lincoln became severe enough, Parker was selected, with three others, to be the president's guard. It is theorized by some that this was because he may have been related to Lincoln's wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, through her mother's family. Mrs. Lincoln is known to have written a letter on Parker's behalf to get him out of the draft, so at least there was some association there, whether family or not. Unfortunately for the president, on the night he was shot, it was Parker's shift, and not one of the other three who had outstanding records as policemen. So where was John Parker when President Lincoln was being shot in the head? No one is quite sure. He did in fact start off the evening guarding the president as he was supposed to, but as he couldn't see the play from his guard position, he left to find a better location from which to watch. During intermission, he is known to have left with the president's coachman to go to the Star Saloon for some drinks. After this, no one is quite sure where Parker was when he was supposed to be guarding the president. The important part is that he was not at his guard post. This may or may not have mattered, though. Even had Parker been there, he very likely would have let Booth in to see the president, as Booth was a famous actor at the time, and Lincoln had even been at Ford's Theatre to see one of Booth's plays in 1863. That being said, Booth would have likely been announced in that case, perhaps making it more difficult for him to deliver a fatal shot. As fellow presidential guard William H. Cook stated, Had Parker done his duty, I believe President Lincoln would not have been murdered by Booth. Parker knew that he had failed in duty. He looked like a convicted criminal the next day. Even without Parker there, Lincoln may also have survived the ordeal had his son, Robert Lincoln, chosen to accept his father's invitation to the play instead of going to meet his friend John Hay, who was the president's private secretary. Being the youngest of that party, Robert Lincoln would have sat in the back seat directly next to the door. Given Booth was using a derringer, he would have had to get close to the president for an accurate shot, thus would have had to walk past Robert Lincoln, which would have made it so Booth would not have been able to sneak up on the president. As with the case of Booth being announced, had Parker been there, who knows what would have happened if Robert Lincoln had decided to attend. But it's not far-fetched to think the president would have had a much better chance had he been aware of Booth's presence. At the least, it likely would not have been a headshot as Derringers were notoriously inaccurate and less at extremely close range, so Booth would have probably aimed for the abdomen if he hadn't been able to get directly behind the president. But who knows, maybe he would have gone in close for a handshake and got off the shot at close range anyways. As to Parker's excuse for not being at his post, according to Lincoln's dressmaker Elizabeth Keckley, Parker had this to say to Mary Todd Lincoln after she accused him of murdering her husband. I could never stoop to murder, much less to the murder of so good and great a man as the president. I did wrong, I admit, and have bitterly repented. I did not believe anyone would try to kill so good a man in such a public place, and the belief made me careless. 
Now you might think that Parker would finally see some real consequences for his dereliction of duty on this one. I mean, he was the president's guard, and he wasn't at his post, and possibly partially drunk at the time of the assassination. But no, the charges against Parker were dismissed, though he was tried. The transcript of that event has unfortunately been lost. In addition, the fact that Parker had been away from his post at the time of the murder was not mentioned in the official report on the Lincoln assassination. It was also not mentioned in major news reports of the day, so Parker avoided the public's wrath too. Not only this, but Parker managed to keep his job, though at least now not directly guarding the president. His new position was as White House security, including being assigned to protect Lincoln's widowed wife. So did Parker learn his lesson after such a dramatic occurrence? Well, no, he didn't. After three more years of spotty service, he was finally fired on August 13, 1868, for sleeping on the job. Ironically, Parker and his family are buried in a cemetery that borders Lincoln Road, Glenwood Cemetery. As for how the Secret Service became involved with protecting the president, while you would have thought Lincoln's assassination would have shown the need for better protection for the president, this didn't happen until after President Garfield and President McKinley were assassinated in 1881 and 1901 respectively. After the McKinley assassination, it was ultimately decided that the Secret Service should take over the responsibility of guarding the president, starting with Theodore Roosevelt. This may seem like a strange choice to assign the Treasury Department's police force to this task, but at the time they were the only federal law enforcement agency with enough manpower to take on this job and others given to the Secret Service. Many of these jobs later went to the FBI, CIA, etc. And now for a bonus fact. While Secret Service agents protecting the president are often depicted in movies always wearing suits, in fact the non-uniform division will dress to blend into their surroundings. So if they they are at a beach, they'll likely be wearing shorts and a t-shirt, depending on what is appropriate. The fact that the president is generally shown at suit and tie type events means that the Secret Service are also generally seen that way as they dress to match. But these Secret Service agents protecting the president directly don't have a specific uniform, though others do. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, over there on the right are a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.